Let's pray. Yes. Heavenly Father, let the power of your Spirit talk to every one of us and let us realize the importance of knowing the truth of the word of the gospel and never letting it go. Uh, teach us all who listen in Jesus' name. Amen. It's the book of Jude which we have done before. And he was the, a younger brother. I don't believe the same mother at all of Jesus because Joseph had already been married and he had a grown-up family. The first half, and it was widely accepted in the literature of the early church by Tertullian, who considered that one Enoch should be included in the canon. Eusebius accepted the same thing, that it should be in the canon. Now we're starting with the first bit. Something peculiar about Jude is that it's written within a time frame which dearly love friends remember that which the apostles of our Lord Jesus, the anointed one, have they told. They have said to you, in the last age, there will be scoffers who will follow their own desires. Jude speaks of angels. Jude speaks of angels who came to earth and went earlier after different flesh. And it is said, in the last age, there will be scoffers who will follow their own sacrilegious desires. They'll do the same thing. Jude speaks of angels who came to earth and went after different flesh, which is, had sex with human women. There is a parallel account in 2 Peter 2, 4 to 8. Also Genesis 6, 1 to 4. When humankind began to increase on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them, those associated with God saw that the human women were beautiful and so they took wives for themselves from any they chose. The Nephilim were on the earth in those times and also afterwards when those associated with God were having sexual relations with the human women who gave birth to their children. We've gone through all of this. The book of Jude is from Jude, a slave servant of Jesus, the Anointed One. To those who are loved and invited by Jesus and God the Father, who have been held firmly by Jesus, the Anointed One. In other words, they were held so firmly by Jesus that they were close to him every day. Then he said, this writer, most translated as sons of God, but the word sons, children, would in indicate an associate with uh, the noun and should be translated as. Where it is clear, these are angels. Job 1 to 6 and so forth. They are angels. Now Jude writes this. Dearly beloved friends, while I was eagerly writing to you about the salvation, we share a necessity came upon me to write to you and to urge you to contend for the faith that was once and for all handed over to the people devoted to God. So there was this faith of the gospel that was handed over to certain people in that generation who were handed to God, and they had it. And then Jude says, certain people have crept in unnoticed, people whose judgment was written beforehand. A long time ago, they commit sacrilege and they use God's favour as a license to commit vice. They disown our only Master and Lord, Jesus the Anointed One. Although you already know about this, I want you to know what God did to the people of 
Sodom and Gomorrah and to the people of Egypt. Now we'll just diverge a little. One Enoch says that the main angel who was responsible was bound hand and foot and cast into darkness where he would remain until the great day of judgment. Different flesh had another kind. Now this flesh is not homosexuality, but rather the union of angels, the watchers with humans. You can read this yourself from the source translation. So magic is associated with the book of watches. Second Enoch says that the people of Sodom committed abominable acts. They were corrupting children, magic making, making enchantments and devilish witchcraft. Jude mentions the three elements that are linked with the watches. Sorcery, going after different flesh and punishment of angels. Now this is serious stuff. We're not taught it in our churches. We should be. It's the background of the history of the human race of which we are a part. Enoch 6 to 10 states that 200 angels came to earth. One Enoch says that the watchers taught to humans sorceries, enchantments, and the binding of enchantments. So this is what Jude is writing about. And then he goes on to say, in the same way, these dreamers foully pollute the natural realm. They're still around. They're still around. USA is full of uh, pedophilia. Absolutely full of it. So is US, So is England. And it mentions Michael, the chief messenger. And then Jude goes on to say, they have traveled the way of Cain. And this is what I like. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied to these people too. He said, we should listen. The Lord comes with tens of thousands of his devoted people. Have you ever heard of that coming of the Lord? Have you? I haven't. The coming of the Lord is supposed to be when Jesus comes to take his bride to heaven or the coming of the Lord is supposed to be when uh, we eventually end up in Israel for a thousand years we reign on earth. Nobody talks about this coming of the Lord. It's the most important coming there is because it says the Lord comes with tens of thousands of his devoted people to carry out the judgments on everyone, to cross-examine every soul among them who has committed sacrilege, as sinners have said about him. Have you ever heard that preached from a pulpit? It's the most important coming of the Lord there is, because it brings judgment on the people of earth. And it's time the people of earth realize they are bound for judgment. They're not bound for heaven. They're bound for judgment. And then, I love this about Jude. But you, dearly beloved friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, foretold. They said to you, in the last days, there will be scoffers who will follow their own sacrificing and sacrilegious desires. These people cause divisions and are soulish, nothing to do with the spirit, soulish, as they don't have the spirit, the Holy Spirit. You either have the Holy Spirit or you follow your soul. Not all believers have the Holy Spirit. All believers do not have the Holy Spirit. All believers have the Spirit of Christ. They receive the Holy Spirit when they accept that they need to receive the seal that Paul promised in Ephesians 1. But you, dearly beloved friends, build up your most sacred faith. Now that means you have knowledge. Without a sacred, sacred faith being built up, it means you would have no knowledge of it. It is most important to build up the most sacred faith 
to which we have been blessed and received. It's most important. We have to build up our most sacred faith. Build it up. Keep on thinking about it. Keep on praying about it. Keep on living it. Keep on telling others about it. That's what we have to do. And then Jude says, keep yourselves within the sphere of God's love. So in other words, every day we have to stay in that sphere of God's love. God loves me. I'm in his love. I'm not in the love with other people. We're in the sphere of God's love. There's too much emphasis on loving other people. Too much emphasis on relationship with people. No. It's not even an emphasis on a relationship with God. It's an emphasis on a knowledge of the faith. It's an emphasis on those who have heard the faith and who are to hang on to the faith. If we don't hang on to it, we lose it. There's a saying, if you want to keep it, use it. If you want to lose it, don't use it concerning a limb. The same applies to this knowledge of the faith. We have to know the knowledge of the faith. It is most important. And then Jude goes on to say, keep yourselves within the sphere of God loves and receive, receive the mercy of our Lord Jesus, the anointed one, which gives eternal life. We have to keep on receiving it. Not enough to have received it once. We keep on receiving the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when you read the scriptures, you realize how much of them you really do not know. Do not know enough to follow every day. We need to follow the scriptures, the true scriptures. We need to follow what has been given to the old saints regarding the faith. And then Jude goes on to say, on the one hand, be merciful to those who are undecided. That's what it is. Be merciful. If there are some people who are a little shattering, a little shaky in their faith, show mercy. But you only show mercy by telling them to keep on with the faith. If we don't tell them to keep on with the faith, we're not showing mercy. And that includes every one of us. That includes every one of us. On the other hand, save others by snatching them from the fire. And on the other hand, be merciful to others while being extremely careful, hating even the coating which has been foully polluted by the natural realm. I wonder how much of our coating has been polluted by the natural realm. When God looks at us, how much of the natural realm does he see? Talking of critic half the day, watching the football matches, being concerned with the things of earth. It's a pollution. It's a pollution. And it's the natural realm. We have to get out of the natural realm. Somehow or other, we have to get more into the spiritual realm. We have to get more into the Holy Ghost. We have to live in the Holy Ghost. That's the spiritual realm. We live in the Holy Ghost. And that involves prayer in the Holy Ghost. That involves leaving things that would turn us away from prayer in the Holy Ghost. And it applies to all of us. Then it says, Now to him who is able to guard you from harm. We have a Christ who is able to guard us from harm. Lord Jesus, guard me from harm. Lord Jesus, guard me from harm. Lord Jesus, guard me from the attacks of these demons. Lord Jesus, guard me from sin that would easily attack me. Lord Jesus, guard me from the principalities and powers. Lord Jesus, guard me from those who would come and interfere with my spiritual walk. 
Lord, get Jesus, guide me from those people who would help to turn me aside from the spiritual realm of the Holy Ghost. Then it says, to him who is able to guard you from harm and to stand you in the presence of his splendor. We don't get there ourselves. He puts us there. He puts us there. If we need to be put there, if we don't have a need to be put there, if we don't have a need to be put there, we don't make it. He has to put us there in the presence of his splendor without stain. Lord Jesus, wash me in your blood. Remove every stain from my life. Remove every stain from my life. And with great happiness, the only God, our Saviour, through Jesus the Anointed One, our Lord, be the splendour, majesty, forceful power and authority as it was before the ages as well as now and forever. Amen. I'd like to read that again. The only God, our Saviour, through Jesus, the Anointed One, our Lord, be the splendour, majesty, forceful power and authority as it was before the ages. Remember what we read from the book of John about the beginning, about the power of Christ. You should go back and read it if you've forgotten about it, which I do easily, sadly. I was read on the King James. All my children were read on the King James. So we all know thousands of verses from the King James. Now the King James is, is a very wrong translation. But there is able to creep through the King James something that attached itself to our life from the Spirit of God and from the truth of the Gospel. At least we got that. And what woke me up to do it today was one of my daughters contacting me. Here she is quoting the King James, just like I used to do and still do. That's why I'm going back to source and uh, and the Orthodox translation of the Old Testament. Let me read it again. The only God, our Saviour, through Jesus, the Anointed One, our Lord, be the splendour, majesty, forceful power and authority as it was before the ages as well as now and forever. Amen. We had better worship the Lord Jesus Christ. We had better follow him. We had better just be on his footsteps all the time. We had better be walking with him. We had better be listening to him. And to do that you have to keep on reading and reading and reading because we forget. May the Lord bless us all. Amen. They receive the Holy Spirit when they accept that they need to receive the seal that Paul promised in Ephesians 1.